we're moving away from the idea of taking a look at indirect proofs and proofs in general for a little while. And we're going to start taking a look at the precursors to the next section. We're going to start looking at sequences first and then series. A sequence, or at least a numerical sequence for us, is going to be a list of elements with some pattern. And so we're not going to look at any other types of sequence except numerical sequences at this point. Every sequence that we're going to look at has an explicit form, a domain, and an initial value. And so when we say explicit form, we're basically saying that we can write it so that we can access any element which is inside the array of numbers by an index. So for example, let's consider this sequence just as a basic example, one, three, five, seven, nine, where all we're doing is we're just increasing each element by two. One way to write this sequence explicitly is by using a sub n, where n is the index, is equal to 2n plus 1, where n is an element of the integers n greater than or equal to 0. So for example, if I were to write a sub 0, I would just substitute 0 back in for n into this sequence. And so that would just yield a 1, because we would get 2 times 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. A1 would be 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. Um, in fact, A7 would be equal to 2 times 7 plus 1, which is 15. And so this just tells us which element inside the sequence that we're accessing. This is called the index. Right? Now, there's lots of different ways to be able to express these sequences. So there's not necessarily one explicit way to write that's correct. So for example, the exact same sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, could be written as 2n minus 1, but this time the initial value would be at negative 1 instead of positive 1, or instead of 0, excuse me. So we could go through and just do that an enumerate amount of times, but we're just going to stick with um, just illustrating two examples for this particular one. Now let's take a look at a number of examples, where all we're going to do is we're just going to go through and try to define an explicit sequence or an explicit formula for each of the sequences. So the first one's probably the easiest one because I think everybody can see that the denominator is just getting bigger by one each time. One way to be able to write this would be a sub n is going to be equal to one over n plus two. n is an integer, n greater than or equal to zero. So if we substituted and just a way to check to make sure this works, if you substitute zero in, that's a half, which is the which is the zero term in the sequence. And if I substitute one in, that would be one third, which is, even though it's the second number, it's the first element in the sequence. And so at least it looks like it's correct. Now there's another way to write this. In fact, there's a lot of other ways to write this. Another way that we could define this sequence is by using I'm just going to call it b sub n, and it doesn't matter. The um, a and b are just the names, much like functions. I could define this as 1 over n, where n is an integer, but this time the initial value is 2. And think about what happens if you substitute 2 back in. Well, that would mean that we get a half. And if I substitute 3, that would be a third. And those, again, are the first two elements which are inside the sequence. So that's how we can go through and try to define that, right? So um, I'm just going to stick with the first one. It doesn't really matter. They're both the same, or they're both correct, excuse me. But this is probably the more popular answer just because it's most easily accessible. Now, another example of a sequence, and we want to write the explicit form, would be 5, negative 7, 9, 11, 13, et cetera. Let's ignore the signs for right now. I think from the sequence, everybody can see that we're just increasing each of the next successive terms by two. Right? So we're just adding two, adding two, adding two, if we're eliminating the, um, the signs of this. Now also, we have this alternating signs phenomenon going on with this sequence. Right? So um, how do we try to account for that? So here's how we're going to take care of alternating signs. There's um, a couple different ways, but I'm going to show you the most simplistic way to do that. Um, one way 
is to use minus one to the n, right? And think about this. If n starts at zero, this would be a one when n equals zero. It would be negative one when n equals one. It would be one when n equals two. And then it would be negative one when n equals three. So in other words, what it's doing is it's just going positive to negative to positive to negative, et cetera. And so it looks like that the odd terms are going to produce a negative. The even terms are going to produce a positive one. So we're multiplying either by positive one or negative one. Now, what if you want, and this is if you want to start with a positive, okay, when n is greater than or equal to zero. If you want to start with a negative, just use minus one to the n plus one. And that's when you want to start with a negative and n is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so those are your two alternating factors. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just write those up at the top now that we've gone through and given a description to those. So it's either minus one to the n or minus one to the n plus one. Okay, so up top here we have minus one to the n, and that's if the first term is positive and minus one to the n plus one first term negative. And again, those are for when n is greater than or equal to zero. If you change that um, initial value, then unfortunately, it might not produce what you want it to. So anyway, back to this problem where we're trying to develop a sequence. B sub n is going to be equal to minus one to the n because we want the first term to be positive. And then we're going to say 2n, since we're increasing by two each time, plus five, right? And that's because we want to start at five, where n is an integer n greater than or equal to zero. Now, let's say for some reason, we wanted to start, to, such as in letter C, where every number is going to be negative, positive, negative, positive. We just flip that, um, that parity. So now we're just going to use C sub n equals minus one to the n plus one, two n plus five n is an integer, n greater than or equal to z. All right, so that works just as nicely as the previous, uh, except now we just alternated the signs in each of the sequences. Now, the last one of these is a little bit tougher, just because it's not pretty apparent, because we're not increasing by a specific number each time. So you have negative 1, 2, 7, 14, 23, 34, 47. And so there's no number that we're really adding consistently. And we can't use a recursive sequence, all right? It's because we're just trying to get the explicit form. Um, the other type where we use recursion is an implicit form. So we don't want that. So for us to be able to find this, let's try to look for some sort of pattern or something that's going on with this. And if we have the numbers, to me, it looks like each of these numbers is two less than a perfect square. And we know our perfect squares are one, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. And if we look at our list here, negative 1, 2, 7, 14, 23, 34, 47, we're just subtracting 2 from each of those. So this was a sneakier one than the previous because it's not arithmetic by nature. In other words, like the previous two, we were just adding a number to be able to get to the next term. So for us to define d sub n, that's going to be n squared minus two. And in fact, we don't even need the parentheses because we're not multiplying by anything. And we probably want to start with one because we want to make sure we get a negative one and then a two. So let's just say n is greater than or equal to one for this one. So these are our explicit sequences, right? Again, make sure that you define both the initial value as well as being able to define what the, um, the domain of this is.
All right, in the next video, we're going to start taking a look at the idea of series, which is basically just adding up all the terms in a sequence.